This short video is going to go over uh, what a zine is, as well as what zines you have access to uh, that are located at the Archives and Special Collections. Here we're going to start with some of the earliest stuff that we've got. This is a 1791 abolitionist pamphlet, and there's not exactly a direct correlation to zines in its manufacture, whereas a pamphlet like this would have been typeset. Um, it would have had some editing work done to it. Uh, and it would have been distributed to those who uh, could access it and then taken down into the South. This is a seditious pamphlet. Uh, you could be arrested for carrying something like this in a slave-owning state. So that's just kind of the direct connection between what a zine is, part of the underground. And here, a hundred years later, uh, roughly in the 1880s, we have a pamphlet regarding uh, working conditions, specifically uh, the eight-hour day and children's rights as far as labor is concerned. As you can see too, it includes things like verse. Um, and one of my favorite parts of this pamphlet here at the bottom, it, it mentions once you've finished reading this, please pass it on to a friend or a neighbor who might benefit from it. So this is definitely in line with uh, the format of a zine where we're kind of sharing and passing around information, uh, possibly in an underground or political um, circumstance. And here from 2012, another 100 years later, um, we have a zine about the rules of picketing. And this highlights some strikes and picketing that has occurred in the last 15 years or so from various large corporations and just kind of what best practices might be um, around those labor uh, issues. So the sort of trajectory of zines here, as you can see, is very much uh, small, something that can be transported around easily, and then towards the most recent period, photocopied and made cheaply. Here uh, also was one of the earlier iterations of what an actual zine uh, comes from, which is the science fiction fanzine collection. This specifically issue ERG has a range of things, everything from reviews of films and books, to comic books, comic-related illustrations, uh, to letters to the editor, um, people sharing their own narratives and their own ideas about fantasy and science fiction uh, topics. This one from 1973 here. And another element of that, drawing more into the 1970s, are the punk rock zines. So this sort of black and white tonality, things made on photocopy machines as opposed to hand-typed uh, on typewriters of a previous uh, period, these ones were relying a lot on photocopy uh, stores. Here you're using photography and other kinds of multimedia to overlay in your zine and basically make a kitchen table press sort of mock-up uh, and then photocopying all of that to then produce your own unique zine, um, which includes everything from advertisements to record stores that you like. Uh, to hobbies like skateboarding. Here, Contort uh, number four is demonstrating just that, people sharing their stories about how to skateboard, where to skateboard. Also, um, a little bit more of a freeform literary style can be imparted into zines. This here is Evasion. This is a travel log, basically, and it's all handwritten. It largely could be read as a diary in a way. And it kind of explains a personal narrative, which is something that zines also really strive to do, to share individual personal stories. This sort of punk rock aesthetic from the 70s and 80s really gets picked up as a somewhat of a quintessential aesthetic of zines based on its sort of cheap printing quality. Here, uh, another one from uh, New York Year Zero Collective produced a brief history of the 23rd precinct of uh, the police department in New York City by republishing every newspaper article they could find about police brutality in that precinct. And following up with that, other kinds of lending of uh, 1970s countercultural movements by mapping out where locations used to be uh, in places that you can no longer physically see or experience in the same way. They've gone about creating a walking tour or a, a guide that tells you a brief history of something that maybe has been lost something that isn't really presenting itself on the surface there. So that's one other element that draws from more of the alternative press underground newspapers that uh, we have in the collection. Here we have another zine uh, from Tahi Wang from 2019 on LB City. This is a great example of a zine that draws on digital elements. You can see that there is a lot of visual aesthetic depiction drawn from a computer, uh, which all of the previous examples we've shown 
are very much about the analog. This one really harnesses converting the digital to an analog. And that's kind of a strength today of being able to mash up, again, some of these aesthetics from the past to the, to the present. Browse by Mike Centeno really focuses a lot more on drawings. Um, you know, this merging of comics and text to illustrate what a story might be, uh, as well as depicting those around you, um, your community. And you can really make this your own story about a people and where they come from. And then other smaller iterations like Parcel Ghost here are instructional. And they're kind of telling you ways that you can take control of tools or, or certain aspects to get back to uh, creation. You know, a lot of zine making is about creating and it's about giving you inspiration to learn new skill sets. This one by Isabella Rotman is a, is a great example of a guide which a lot of the 1960s and 70s underground publications were very much trying to help you uh, learn new tools for free. And that's kind of what zine culture is all about, cheaply disseminating interesting information. So hopefully this has been illuminating, demonstrating to you the shapes and sizes that zines can come in, and hopefully it's inspiring to make you want to make your own.